Good morning to our St. John's Community Baptist Church family and our online community. My name is Crystal Gilmore. We are in week six of the 40 Days of Prayer Spiritual Growth Campaign. Today, I will be narrating for you day 38. But first, Pastor Phil will read our scriptures. Our scripture reading today is Genesis chapters one through three and Romans chapter three, verse 23. I'm gonna read select verses for Genesis chapters one through three that I believe are relevant for this devotional. Genesis chapter one, verse 27. So God created man in his own image in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 31. God saw the all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Chapter 2, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens... And no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, 
and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed on you above all the livestock and all the wild animals, you will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, from dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. We trust in your redemptive plan. God is good and can be trusted. He made a beautiful garden for mankind to live and rule and then blessed us to be fruitful and increased in number. Sin entered the world through Eve and Adam's choice to break the boundary God established when he told them they must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or they would die. We see this sinful nature even in two-year-olds who walk directly toward the very thing their parents told them not to touch. I too have moments when I willfully disobey what God asked me, ask of me. God wanted Adam and Eve to freely choose obedience out of love for him, but their choice to do their own thing led to separation from him. But the story doesn't end here. God would not allow sinful separation to be the final word. He had a redemptive plan for us in the same way good parents have a redemptive plan for their two-year-olds. God's heart is revealed in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, which reads, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's plan is freely offered and available to all people. And though he knows not all people will choose him, he will never stop his loving pursuit. Will you trust his redemptive plan for your life today? Reflection prayer. Father, thank you for free will. I repent of my momentarily lapse of defiant willingness to go my own way and do my own thing. I surrender to your Lordship. 
I acknowledge that I do not know better than you. And I will continue to come into your presence and wait for your direction before I act. I will trust your ways, especially when I cannot see around the corner because your redemptive plan for my life is good. Thank you for always desiring deeper intimacy with me. I say yes to your tender invitation to choose you. Amen.